Hey everyone, this is a brief introduction to the hypothesis testing um, Excel worksheet that I created. Um, if you're in my class, this will be posted on D2L. Um, if you are taking this class from somebody else, uh, it might be in your D2L shell as well. Um, if you would like access to this, um, you can also send me an email. My email is posted on the Red Rocks website. Um, but basically, this Excel file has several different tabs. Um, they're each labeled with the type of hypothesis test um, it is. So starting with um, a hypothesis test about proportions. So notice that the claims here would be about some kind of p-value, some population proportion. We've got um, hypothesis tests about means and two different versions of those. Hypothesis tests about standard deviations. Hypothesis tests about two proportions. So this is comparing um, population proportions from two different populations. Um, and then same thing for means. I only have the independent version in here. If you are doing the dependent version um, and would like me to try and add that to uh, this document, just let me know. Um, and then I also have a table for ANOVA in here, uh, although likely you won't be covering that in, in this particular class. So your first test, task, if you want to use this for a hypothesis test problem, is to figure out which type of hypothesis test you're doing. So I have an example here. This question um, is taken out of our textbook. Uh, it says, in a test of the effectiveness of garlic for lowering cholesterol, 49 subjects were treated with raw garlic. Um, their cholesterol levels were measured before and after um, the treatment, and the changes in their levels of LDL cholesterol were measured. So these changes in LDL cholesterol, um, this is kind of what they were trying to study. So if these people took garlic, did that help their cholesterol levels? These changes had a mean of 0.4 and a standard deviation of 21.0. Those would be in milligrams per deciliter. Um, these two that I highlighted in green, these are sample statistics, so information about the sample that they took. Um, the sample also consisted of 49 subjects. And we're supposed to use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that with garlic treatment, the mean change in LDL cholesterol is greater than zero. So here's the statement that we need to pay attention to. So the claim that we're trying to test is that the mean change in LDL cholesterol is greater than zero. So this is a statement about a mean. This is our claim. Um, this is a claim about a single mean, a mean for a particular population, the mean in the change of LDL values. Uh, so in the testing document, I'm going to be using one of these two mean um, options. Now notice that with the mean there are two different options. Um, one is if we know the value of sigma. So that value of sigma, remember, is the population standard deviation. So if I come back to the information we're given here, there's nothing in here to tell me what the standard deviation of the population is. Now they do give us the standard deviation from the sample, and that would be typical for any of these, um, but we don't know the population value. And generally speaking, we would not know the, val the value. It's kind of unique circumstances when that would be the case. So most likely I'm always going to be using this first one um, where our sigma is unknown. And then the first thing I need to put in is what exactly is the claim? So the claim here was that the mean was greater than zero. So as a mathematical statement, I need my mean value greater than, and there's a little drop down here so you can select the proper um, equals or greater than or whatever it is. So I would pick greater than here. Uh, I would pick this greater than. Um, notice we have equals. This would be a less than or equal to. This would be a greater than or equal to, less than, greater than, and then the exclamation point equals. Um, that's how you write not equals. Um, in either computer science or this, that's how I implemented it with, for, uh, with this document. So we want to know if this was greater than zero. 
So this line here, mu greater than zero, that is the claim that we're trying to test. Now based on that, you can determine the null hypothesis will be um, mu equal to zero. You notice that this automatically filled in the zeros for all of these. And the alternative hypothesis is either going to be the same as the original claim, um, which in this case it is, or the opposite of the original claim um, based on whichever one doesn't have equals. Uh, so hopefully you talked about that in class, but determine um, what is the null and what is the alternative hypothesis. And then based on our alternative hypothesis, we can figure out is this left, right, or two-tailed. So because our alternative hypothesis is mu greater than zero, this is going to be a right-tailed test. So I'll select right here. Now in this document, all these yellow spots, these are the places where you need to fill things out. So um, the next section here has all of the sample information. So we need to get the sample mean, sample standard deviation, and the sample size from the problem. So here's our mean of 0.4, standard deviation of 21, and n value of 49. Right, so with our sample values, um, I'm also going to make note of what is the significance level. Um, this should always be given in your problems, although in reality we would be able to decide what this should be. Um, the significance level 0 0.05, that would kind of correspond with a 95% confidence um, in our results here. So we're going to say anything less than 0 0.05 or 5%, um, that's going to be considered uh, unusual and that will help us classify our, our result. All right, so with everything typed in here, um, this program will automatically compute the test statistic. I have it written, the formula written out here, um, but that's what this is computing just based on the previous information that we put in. Um, and then based on the test statistic, uh, this will compute the p-value. If you actually click in here, you can see the formula that I used. Um, it looks a little bit intimidating if you're not used to um, programming and that kind of thing. But basically, uh, there's some different if statements that look at, is this a left-tailed test? Is it a right-tailed test? Or is it a two-tailed test? And then depending upon which type it is, um, I'm going to take either the area to the right of this test statistic, or to the left, or um, that two-tailed version. So it's not really anything too crazy. Um, it's using the t.distribution function to find those areas either to the right or to the left or with the two tails. So in this case, this was a right-tailed test. So this is finding the area to the right of t equals 0.13. Um, and the p-value we get is 0.447. This should be all the information you need in order to uh, solve the problem or complete your test. Um, in this case, because this p-value is greater than alpha, um, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Basically, the probability that the null hypothesis is true is decently high. Now, we don't know that the null hypothesis is true. We can't um, support it, but we wouldn't say that this is a small enough probability. It's not less than 5%. Um, so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis, which means that in this case we would fail to support the alternative hypothesis, um, which is the same thing as saying we're not supporting the original claim. So my conclusion might look something like there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the mean change in LDL cholesterol is greater than zero. So basically, there's not enough evidence to show that um, people's cholesterol levels did indeed drop after they had taken garlic. Um, so to answer the question uh, associated with this, what does this result um, suggest about the effectiveness? Um, it, it doesn't say that the garlic is not effective, but it's not really convincing evidence to say that the garlic is effective. So we're, we kind of would need to uh, do another study, maybe using more subjects. Um, really, the, the mean here of 0.4 is just such a small number that you know maybe it's improving those levels, but maybe they're pretty much just staying the same um, or even potentially getting worse. Uh, so we can't really conclude anything about the effectiveness of this garlic. There's not good evidence for it. So if you have other types of hypothesis tests, you should be able to do the similar um, type of thing here, filling in whatever the yellow boxes are. 
um, and then determining your conclusions based on the p-value. Hope that all makes sense and helps you out with um, the computations for these problems. Uh, thanks for watching.